in the most uh, delightful, shall I say, ways. For example, the Talmud said that there was ample proof that God was in fact cursing the African race. It said, for example, that because Ham had gazed upon Noah's nakedness in the dark of night, that uh, the African race was henceforth turned black. So that the blackness of the African became a sort of a, you know, a, a visible indication of that curse. The Talmud said that because it was dark at night when Ham entered that tent and looked upon his father's nakedness, he had to open his eyes, you know, um, big head to buck his eyes, as they say in America, to, um, to see his father in the darkness. And that's why Africans had big eyes. <laughs> the Talmud said, and here, and I'm going to quote all this exactly in a minute. You know, I'm not making this up. It sounds incredible, but I'm actually paraphrasing a gentleman by the name of um, Harold Brackman. A man who works or worked until recently for the Simon Wiesenthal Center of all agencies. He wrote all of, all of this in his dissertation. And it might not surprise you to discover that once people like myself began quoting what this guy Brackman wrote, I'm sure you can guess what happened next. And that is that Brackman denied he had ever written this stuff. <laughs> This stuff is in Bachman's PhD dissertation. It's called the Ebb and Flow of History. Anybody here can easily read it. You can get it in any library. If, if they don't have it, they'll get it for you into library loans. It's called the Ebb and Flow of History. It's a PhD dissertation, I think in the history department at UCLA, 1977, by Harold D. Brackman, who I believe up to a couple years ago, maybe even now, is or was until recently a functionary of the um, Simon Wiesenthal, or is it Wiesenthal Center? But despite the fact that his writings were clearly in the public record, that anybody, any an undergrad student can access this stuff and check it for themselves, once the story got out, he quickly uh, denied it. Ever this, this man actually wrote letters to the New York Times. I believe I have the actual, um, you know, uh, footnotes here in the Jewish onslaught uh, concerning all this. This man wrote letters to the New York Times. He wrote a slew of letters to black publications all over this country, denying all of this stuff, even though it's right there on the record. So I'm, on, you know, using very good evidence here when I paraphrase what he's saying. Brackman tells us that. Because, and, and, and here it, it gets to be totally uh, hilarious. Now, these Jewish uh, rabbis, the sages, they call them, the wise men who put together this Talmud, they actually invented, I mean, they, they, you know, they, they sort of elaborated on, uh, on, on the biblical story. You know, it's like, like a jazz musician who improvises. Yeah. Well, they improvise on the story. They did a whole elaborate improvisation in the story and somehow Lord knows how come but they came up with the notion that Ham when he went into that tent and looked upon his naked father Noah that Ham buggered his father he had anal intercourse with his father and because he had anal intercourse with his father that's the reason and here I'm, I'm, I'm citing black men that's the reason why part of the curse was to give black men large uh, sexual organs <laughs> So all of this was part of the curse. The black skin, uh, the big eyes, even the kinky hair too, big sexual organs, all of this. So as amazing as this may seem, this transpired a thousand years before the beginnings of the transatlantic slave trade. And when the slave trade came into being, this notion of the hermetic curse was revived and it became, both for Jews and for Christians, it became the most pervasive of all the attempts to, to rationalize that slave trade. Let me quote the exact words of Harold Backman, lest you suspect that I'm making this up. I'm quoting here from Harold Backman, the dissertation I mentioned a minute ago, The Ebb and Flow of History. Quote, there is no denying, this is on page 34 in case anybody who has a book feels like reading along with me. I know several of you have the book out there. This is on page 34 in, in, in the middle of the page, second new paragraph. There is no denying that the Babylonian Talmud was the first source, and listen to how unequivocal he is here, it was the first, the very first 
In other words, this is Bachman from the Simon Wiesenthal Center acknowledging that the Talmud was the one, was the, the place that invented the story of the Hamitic uh, curse. There is no denying that the Babylonian Talmud was the first source to read a negrophobic content into the episode. Here he is referring to the episode of Ham looking upon his father's nakedness. He goes on to suggest that these early sages, some of them, you know, uh, sort of um, impose this homosexual uh, sort of spin on the, on the story. Quote, he says, Rab, Rab is one of these sages. He says, Rab maintained that Ham had unmanned Noah. So Ham, according to this sage, had actually castrated his father. While Samuel, Samuel is some other sage, Samuel claimed that he had buggered him as well. Both unmanned him and buggered him. Now how this arose out of the biblical story, um, you know, I'll never understand. <clears throat> Let me continue to quote from Brackman here in his dissertation. Quote, he is discussing here various 